Behind America's school lunches are giant corporations many schools hire to manage every part of the meal, from budgets to choice of food. Rick Hughes saw firsthand the profit-driven culture of the school lunch industry. He once worked for the biggest food manager in the U.S., Sodexo. There's a lot of money in food. Um, food is a, is, a, is a big profit business. Sodexo encouraged employees to buy from big food processing companies that in return gave Sodexo cash rebates. When we followed those uh, procurement guidelines, uh, we received bonuses for those. But New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman says Sodexo's profit motives extended far beyond those employee bonuses, which are legal. He says Sodexo crossed the line when it pocketed cash rebates actually meant for the schools. If, uh, you know, you're, you promise that you're giving, passing a discount on to your ultimate customer and you don't pass that discount on, that's, that's uh, stealing money. In 2010, Sodexo settled the case by returning $20 million to New York public schools. Sodexo admitted no wrongdoing. But the investigation has expanded. Schneiderman says his office has uncovered a nationwide pattern of public schools getting ripped off. He's fired off subpoenas to 10 more food industry companies. We know that there are cutbacks in programs for kids uh, in gym and art and uh, teachers are, are teaching in larger classes. It's outrageous that there's more money that should be going, that is legally owed to our schools. It's not going there. Not only are these food service management companies robbing our schools of their financial promises, but they're not feeding our kids the most nutritional food, okay? Um, let's take a brief look at how we got here, okay? About 20, 30 years ago, most schools used to cook on school premises, okay? Um, out of the McDonald's Burger King era came delivering foods, okay? So this is the concept where you had companies like Sodexo's, Chartwell's, delivering processed foods to our, to our schools, okay? We all see all the studies, we look at the papers, and we see obesity is an epidemic now. Our schools have been responsible and part of, of causing this high rate of childhood obesity. We're in school nine months out of the year, six hours a day. I understand, you know, kids eat outside of other schools, you know, we eat at, at home. Let's not make no mistake about it. A school is a, a place for learning. That does not stop when you go into the cafeteria, okay? The learning still continues to go on. We're in our health classes and they're telling us, well, you should eat right, you should eat good foods. But the hypocrisy starts when you walk into the classroom and you're looking at these patties, these, these nuggets. And you have to say to yourself, wow, when I open this up, this does not look like food. So Sodexo, Chartwells, Winston's, and, so, and, and several other food service management companies learn how to flip chicken. I didn't say flipping burgers now. I said flipping chickens. You probably say, what is that? Okay, I'll give you an example with some districts. Chartwells will have, let's say, 100 pounds of chicken. They will go to Tyson's or Purdue and say, look, I have 100 pounds of whole raw chicken. Can you turn this into 400 pounds of nuggets? How is that possible? How is that possible? I'll tell you how, because they add fillers in it. And I don't mean just soy. Okay, it's things that your body shouldn't have. It even gets worse with beef. You guys heard of pink slime, okay? Just to break it down to you, this is the part of the beef that used to be regulated only for dog food. The USDA, the very same entity that's supposed to protect us and our kids, have decided that as long as this pink slime goes through this ammonia process, it's acceptable for human consumption. And we're wondering why we're being so, why we're so sick. You know, it's not, it doesn't stop there. You know, we have high, high sodium foods. You know, the whole goal was to mimic the Burger Kings and the McDonald's because the parents have already bought into this paradigm of how to eat when they come home anyway. Nobody has time to uh, cook. They took advantage of us, you know. Shame on us though, okay. Anytime you send your kid to school and they're not getting good grades, we immediately want to find out what's going on. If you know that there's something wrong in the cafeteria, you should stand up and speak up and do the same thing. Your average pizza in the schools have 35 ingredients. How is that possible? 
I employ and demand you guys, when you leave here, ask your schools. I want to know what's in every single item, okay? But it's not all bad, because I, I found a solution, which is not that unique, okay? There's other states that's taken on this new way, or excuse me, I say old way, of cooking food. It's through central kitchens, okay? Central kitchens are basically large building complexes that serve food out to individual schools, okay? Newark is in desperate need of a central kitchen, okay? The difference with my central kitchen is, is I connected a two and a half acre farm, okay? This way you begin to show kids food really grow. It just doesn't pop up, okay? <laughs> the piece of sauce really comes from an actual fruit, okay? A tomato. The problem is right now is that the USDA is in bed with the food service management companies. For an example, last year they declared a piece of a vegetable. I mean, how dare you insult my intelligence? You're going to tell me pizza is a vegetable now, okay? Well, the reason for that was farmers got screwed on that, on that deal, local farmers, okay? Big agribusiness served on that because they're going to turn this into processed stuff, okay? The central kitchen begins to support local farming again, okay? We talk about sustainability, we talk about green, okay? That seems to be trendy words that we use constantly, okay? When I'm talking about sustainability, I'm talking about supporting our local farmers, okay? This is the only way the local farmer is ever going to stay around. We talk about community gardens, another trendy thing. If these community gardens don't have an outlet the next two or three years, they're going to be obsolete like everything else that comes around that sounds trendy. This central kitchen gives lifeline to the community gardens, okay? I also want to touch on the fact that over the last 20 to 30 years, we have seen to lost our way in the way that we see food, okay? And I don't mean that trendy commercial by uh, Red Lobster. This is how I see food, okay? But how we visually see food, okay? Some of you guys are probably hungry right now, thinking about food. Food is seductive, okay? We know what we're going to eat the night before we go to bed, okay? So we have kids thinking about nuggets. You know, Mom, Dad, can I get nuggets? We have to show kids in the essential kitchens of how to prepare, how to prepare real food. The central kitchen is the lifeline to keeping real restaurants around. If you want to minimize the power that McDonald's and Burger King have, you have to understand the power of food. Our kids are not healthier right now because someone decided to take advantage of two parents working every single day. The fact that we don't have time to prepare food, which is not actually true. It doesn't take long to even pre-cook your, your food. You can, you know, grill some, some chicken, you can have salad, but most importantly, we need flavor in our foods when we talk about healthy foods. Right now you see this, this backlash or this claim of backlash of um, kids rejecting the new USDA food regulation. They're not eating the fruits, they're not eating the vegetables. It's sabotage, and I'll tell you why. You just can't put out broccoli and carrots and say, here, eat it. You need to be innovative with it, okay? You need to have some seasonings to it. I don't mean salt, okay? You need to learn the chemical reaction of lemon and certain spices, which give you a salt-like taste, okay? This is what they're not telling you. This is what they're not doing because you will reject this processed food. I'm not just talking just to be talking. I do this every single day. As I go out into the um, schools, we, um, sorry. Okay, I go out into the schools and I teach healthy eating. I actually do it. Um, it gotten so bad at this one particular school, they was eating my healthy smoothies, which was a mix of fruit and veggies, and rejecting the school lunch. They brought me in as a pilot just to shut me up, to show me that it cannot be done. I was told a week later, uh, we might have to put you on the a la carte side, which basically means that that is after they get their school lunch. They have to get the lunch first. The kids say, fine. They walked through the line, took the food, still came to me and paid $3 for the fruit smoothie. Being innovative, what I mean by that is, we say we don't eat certain fruits or certain vegetables, okay? I've taken avocado and turned it into chocolate mousse. And most kids, I say, do you like um, avocado? I'm like, oh, ew, no. When I'm finished, you're going to beg me for it, okay? <laughs> and not only do they beg me for it, I have a strawberry with it, with the chocolate, but their parents call me and say, can you please give me this, this um, recipe? 
So what I'm saying to you is not only have I found a way to get kids to eat healthy food, but Central Kitchens means jobs in Newark, 150 permanent jobs, okay? This is what we talk about, the perfect marriage. We talk about sustainability, we talk about a green building. The building itself is a living model, okay? Because we're talking about renewable energy. Everything in this building what can be renewed, okay? We take our food scraps, we use it for um, compost. Whatever extra foods we do have that's, that is not scrap, we will give the food to the food banks, to the churches. The only way to get our kids back eating healthy is a central kitchen because it mocks the food that most of us used to eat when we was growing up. Take back school lunch, sorry, take back school lunch, we take back our kids' health. That's the bottom line. So once again, I employ everyone when you leave here, call your local schools, ask what ingredients is in our food. 35, 35 ingredients should not be in, 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 in pizza. That is impossible. The food colorings that they use, number one, number two, yellow, or number red. Are you serious? The same that you use inside my clothes, you know? I showed someone where we made um, some different color variation ice creams, you know? I took the, 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 the beet juice to show it, you know, the, 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 the tricks that they use, okay? You know, what flavor you, you thought that was? She said cherry or strawberry, simply because I changed the, the um, color. So, but you know, it was just vanilla ice cream when she tasted it. You know, but then they add the other food flavors to them, okay? I just want to say thank you, and that's the end of my talk.